Tell Mr. Pallone his company owes us $1,200 for repairs we have already done. Yes, I will hold. Matt, would you like eggs or cereal for breakfast? Today's topic, resolved. Cereal is a better choice for breakfast than eggs. First, I will define my terms. Eggs will mean, well, eggs. And cereal will mean... Ooh, 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 ooh. Cereal? <laughs> Miss Wagner says I have to practice all the time if I want to excel in forensics. Forensics? What's that, like dead bodies and stuff? No, he means forensics, like public speaking and debate. Well, I hope. See, our team and another school's team meet and get a topic. Then we state our positions, then they rebut. Then they state their positions, then we rebut. Then they sum up, then we sum up. And whoever is still awake wins. <laughs> hello, hello? Yes. Well, tell Mr. Pallone if he will be back at 2. He can expect my call at 2.01. I hate insurance companies. These deadbeats never pay you on time, and they always have some lame excuse. By the way, Claire, uh, do you have my paycheck? It's in the mail. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. As soon as I get my check, you will get yours. Gotta run. Big Dad School. They're taking his class to see the Liberty Bell. Oh, Eddie, I can see why you're so excited. I mean, it's not every day you get to see a bell. Oh, no, it's more than that. It means freedom and independence. That's very good, honey. After I take a look at that stupid bell, I'll be off the clock. <laughs> No arithmetic, no spelling, I'll be free. Free, F-R-E, free. <laughs> We're seeing the Liberty Bell. <laughs> Liberty Bell weighs over eight tons. Just to put that into proper perspective, if the Liberty Bell were a cowbell, that cow would stand over 20 stories tall. Ah. All right, all right. Any questions? Any questions? Can I ring the bell? Oh, sure, kid. Go ahead. Give it your best shot. <clears throat> oh, that's so hard. You broke it. I did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the side there. You cracked it. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry, kid. We'll just send the bill to your parents. <laughs> Oh, great. All right, we're going on to Independence Hall now, which houses the Declaration of Independence. If the Declaration of Independence were postage stamp, the envelope would be the size of, uh, I don't know, Rhode Island. <laughs> And statistics show that over 75% of guns are now owned by people who live in urban areas. All right, Matt, good job. Tomorrow, guys, I want you all to argue the opposite side. Great argument, Matt. Yeah, I felt like you reached out and grabbed me. I wanted to. <laughs> I mean, with my argument. You've got a lot of passion in you. You mean you can tell? Yeah. Yeah, you just gotta let it out. You know, you really need to relax. Here, look, your neck is stiff. <laughs> and your shoulders are stiff. Well, I think the rest of me is okay, Miss Wagner. <laughs> call me Debbie. I call my professors at college by their first names. Anyway, you better get going or you're going to miss your bus. Oh, no, my bus. Oh, tell you what, I'll, I'll drop you off. Really? You mean like in your car? <laughs> yeah. Maybe today it will actually start. Why don't you just have uh, your boyfriend fix it? Oh, that's a great idea, Matt. If I had a boyfriend. You know, uh, we own a garage. As long as you drop me off, why don't I have one of our mechanics tune up your car for you? For free. Oh, no, no, I, I couldn't let you do that. Resolved. Student teachers are underpaid. Therefore, you should let Roman customizing tune up your car for no charge. How was that? Very persuasive. <laughs> you are a sweetheart, Matt. Oh, thanks. Debbie. Yes. Wait here, I'll get my best man right on it. Joe, you gotta help me. We gotta fix Debbie's car. Who's Debbie? 
My forensics teacher. I really want to make a good impression on her. Too late, pal. She's already met you. I promised her a free tune-up, Joe. Free? No way. Oh, come on, Joe. This is really important to me. I'm begging you, man. Oh, please. Oh, please. I swear I'll do anything. Really? So, uh, if I said quack like a duck, you would do that? Oh, come on, Joe. Quack like a duck. Quack. Quack. Gee, you know, I didn't get the kick that I thought I would out of that. But a deal's a deal. Hi. You're Matt's teacher? Hi. Uh, Debbie Wagner. Joe Roman. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. So my kid brother tells me I have a little bit of car trouble here. Sort of. Sometimes I have trouble getting it to start and run. It usually stops when I want it to, and then even when I don't. <laughs> Hey, Matt, you know that this car is older than you are? Hey, let's talk more work. This is awfully nice of you. I'll tell you what, why don't you give me about two hours and you can come pick the car up or I'll drop it off anywhere that you want. Well, how about that spaghetti place on uh, Chestnut and 3rd? I mean, I can at least buy you dinner if you're sure I can't pay you for fixing my car. Oh, that sounds great. I, I mean, it's our new policy. Free tune-ups. Great. Um, <laughs> how about 8 then? Matt? <laughs> you are such a pal. I can't thank you enough for this. See ya. See ya. Yeah. Man, the things I do for you. Roman customizing. Yeah, bring it in. We'll even throw in a free tune-up. Yes, I think it's generous too, but apparently it's our new policy. Look at you, hot date. Yeah, Matt's teacher. He talked me into giving her car a free tune-up so she's taking me out to dinner. You know, Matt, you can't buy an A. Tell that to Vanna White. <laughs> so, that was the Liberty Bell. Cool, huh? Actually, I was kind of disappointed. It looks kind of cheap. It is cheap, isn't it? Oh, no, it's a national treasure. You can't put a price on the Liberty Bell. <laughs> oh, great, now the faucet's leaking. One more bill, and we will be out on the street. You cracked that. <laughs> Mom, listen. I've got almost $8 in my piggy bank. Honey, it's okay. I was just kidding. We will be fine, as long as nothing big breaks. <laughs> Can I be excused? The fugitive is on. This time I better pay attention. Strange kid. Mind if I eat his french fries? Here. Take mine. Take my meatloaf, too. But don't stop there. Take my shirt. Take my room. Take the air out of my lungs. Open my mouth and rip out my feelings. Take everything I ever had or wanted. Thanks, buddy. Well, uh, thanks for dropping me off. Well, thanks for fixing my car. Well, thanks for dinner. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to have to stop thanking each other. You're right. I might just have to thank you one more time. This is great. We really should do this again sometime soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll call you tomorrow. Hey. Thanks. See ya. Matt! Oh, Matt. Debbie is great, man. I am so glad that you brought her in. Debbie always says that when you get angry, you lose your argument. So right now, I want to be very, very calm and make my points. Because this is one argument I'm not going to lose. Point one. What are you talking about? No, no, no. I go first and make my points. Then you get to rebut. Got it? Okay, you're resolved. You shouldn't date Debbie anymore. Wait a minute, I thought you liked Debbie. Oh, Matt, you mean you really like her? Why come you didn't say something? Point one, the age factor. You and Debbie are the same age, and women reach their sexual peak 10 years later than men. <laughs> Point two. No, 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 you know what, Matt? It's my turn, all right? Now, I'm not listening to you because, A, you're acting like a twerp, all right? And point two, well, point two is the same as A, except substitute jerk for twerp. Hey, I just won. This debate stuff is pretty easy, Matt. Look, 
Just tell me you won't see Debbie anymore, okay? What are you, nuts, Matt? She likes me, I, I like her, of course I'm gonna see her again. I can't believe you just stabbed me in the back like this. Me? Hey, Matt, you begged me to help her out, okay? I mean, Matt, you even quack like a duck, bro. <laughs> you didn't tell me that you liked her? What, was I supposed to read your mind, assuming you have one? Then get out of here, you little rebut head. <laughs> She likes me, man. She told me. Oh, come on, man. She's four years older than you are. Where the heck would you take her on your first date, huh? Homeroom? <laughs> Fine. Forget it. You know what? You can have her. I'll just quit forensics. Okay. I mean it. Great. I'll mention it to Debbie. I'm going to see her again tomorrow. You better not. I mean, you can't. Oh, man. I'll also tell you you need to work on your debating skills. <laughs> Mr. Pallone, don't tell me it's in the mail. That's the oldest trick in the book. I know. I used it yesterday. <laughs> we need that money. Listen to my little girl. Mommy, mommy, I'm hungry. <laughs> Satisfied? Well, look again. Yes, I'll hold. But not to muskrat love. <laughs> Go check the mail, will you, Lou? Sure. Lloyd! Yesterday's invoices say you did five complete tune-ups at no charge? Yes. Yes, I did. Look, I know Joe said it was our new policy, but I gotta speak my mind. This is no way to run a business. Well, Lloyd, I never said that. All right. If you want me to take the fall for you, I will. Claire? Ignore everything I said. It was all my stupid idea. What was I thinking? <laughs> hey, Andy. Lou, did we get anything in the mail? No, just some junk mail. And a letter for your mom from Pennsylvania Liberty Bell Insurance. You cracked that. <laughs> did you ever do anything really bad? Well... I was arrested once for handcuffing myself to a celebrity to protest the wearing of fur. Did you go to jail? No, the judge realized that being handcuffed to Tommy Toon was punishment enough. <laughs> yes, I, I know we promised you a free tune-up, but I was mistaken. It's all my fault. Not Joe, so blame me. Mea culpa. That's Latin for fall guy. <laughs> Lloyd, do you know anything about the Liberty Bell? I know everything about the Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell was given as a gift to the United States by Tokyo in 1787 <laughs> to commemorate the War of 1812. It took Betsy Ross 13 years to sew it. It's only been rung twice. Once when Napoleon defeated the Nazis at the Alamo, and once by Nancy Reagan to announce that dinner was served. Boy, you do know a lot about American history. It's all stored up here. Some of the contents may have shifted during shipping, but it's all here. <laughs> Why do you ask? I poke it, Lloyd. I poke the Liberty Bell. I hit it too hard. Now there's a big crack in it. I'm gonna go to prison. Andy, that's impossible. No, the security guard said so. And I saw the crack. Besides, Mom just got a bill from Pennsylvania Liberty Bell Insurance. Well, the motto of this country is written in Latin on the dollar bill. E pluribus unum, which means you break it, you bought it. <laughs> I can't afford it, Lloyd. Oh, we've got to go explain things and make it right. Unless, of course, you want me to say I did it, which wouldn't surprise me a bit. No, I know I did it. Oh, man, what am I going to do? What would you say that bell was made of? Metal. 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 Come on. I think we have a solution. Don't make any dinner for me, Claire, because I'm going to go out with Debbie again. Can you believe him? Look, Joel, there are about a million women in the greater Philadelphia area. You know, I just wonder why you have to date the one my son has a crush on. Look, Matt begged me to help his teacher out, okay? Like a good brother I did. She asked me out. Well, you know, this may be a bizarre concept for you, but couldn't you have just said no? <laughs> Look, this is Matt's first big crush. Joe, when you were 15, didn't you ever have a crush on an older woman? Yeah, yeah, I actually did. And remember how devastated you were when you finally realized that nothing was ever going to happen between you? 
I see I've asked one question too many. My point is, we both know that sooner or later, Matt is going to get hurt. It just doesn't have to be by you. All right, fine. I'll talk to him. Thanks, Jim. Yep. Ah, oh, I guess you probably want my room now, too. <laughs> Look, can we just talk about this man-to-man? -man? Sure. You going out with Debbie tonight? Yeah, but talk's but over! <laughs> Look, what is your problem, huh? Why don't you just grow up? How can I with you around? Until you showed up, I was the man of the house. Mom used to come to me to help her with the business stuff. Andy used to come to me to take him to school and stuff. Now it's like I don't even exist in my own house anymore. And I thought at least I was safe in my own school, but no. You had to come along and take the one girl that I care about. Your great brother, Joe. Matt, you really think you're only going to see one girl in your life? Not if you see her first. <laughs> what do you want me to say, Matt? That I'm sorry I ever met her in the first place? Why not? That's exactly how I feel about you. All right, fine. If that's what it means to you to be a good brother, then let's go. Joe, what are you doing? Check it out, Matt. You are going to love this. Hello? Debbie? Yeah, hi, uh, this is uh, Joe. Yeah, look, I'm not gonna be able to make it tonight. No, see, uh, some work came up and I'm gonna be real busy. No, it's gonna take more like a couple of days. Yeah. No, I... Better call you. Bye. There. I dumped her. Are you happy? Uh, it's gonna take some welding, but... I can fix it. I just can't decide whether the touch-up paint is Chevy Nova Gold or Ford Escort Bronze. That's him. Hello, young man. My friend and I have come to make right what we have put us under. Terrific. The men's room's down the hall. Come on, we're closing. Chop, chop. No, Lloyd means the bell. Yeah, now the welding alone will take at least an hour. What are you talking about? Lloyd's a great welder. He says you'll never even see the crack. <laughs> are you nuts? Fair question. I didn't think you'd trust me with a job of this magnitude without seeing some samples of my work. Lloyd's the best. Here, take a look at that. 84 Buick Skylark, hit a wall 60 miles an hour. Before, after. Mm -hmm. What is this? An accordion? No, no, my friend. 71 Camaro. Before, after. So, we have a deal? Listen, Lloyd, I gotta let you in a little secret. This isn't the real Liberty Bell. It isn't? No, I got a whole storeroom full of copies like this. You know what? I'll just take another one out. No one has to know. Well, I don't want to get you in any trouble. No, a man like me. Are you kidding? You know who I am? I happen to be Ben Franklin's grandson. Hiram. <laughs> Hiram Franklin. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. Well, you know, if there's anything we can ever do for you. Well, Lloyd, uh, I got an 83 Mustang with a hell of a dent in the fender. There you go. Even if it's not the real bell, Lloyd, it's beautiful. I guess that's because it's really a symbol. No, 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 my little friend. This is a bell. A symbol of two metal things that clang together. Good work today, guys. I want everyone to have their arguments prepared for Monday. Matt, could I see you for a sec? Uh, sure. Um, I, I just, I wanted to ask you something. It's, it's kind of personal. Sure, go ahead. Well, I, uh, it's, it's just... <sighs> Debbie, are, are you okay? I'm sorry. I've never really been dumped before. God, it really hurts. Did, did Joe tell you if I said or did anything? Um, I think it may have been something I said. What? You see, I told Joe I didn't want him to see you anymore. But please don't cry. But why? I, I, I thought we were friends. Don't you like me, Matt? Oh, of course I like you. I like you a lot. A whole lot. Oh, Matt. See, I told Joe if he was a real big brother, he'd stop seeing you. He told me I should grow up. I don't think he may be at a point. Oh, Matt Roman. 
I think you are a very smart, sensitive, handsome man. And if I was in your grade, you were exactly the kind of man I would want to go out with. Really? Really. You sure there's no chance for us? <laughs> then I know this older guy. He's kind of like me. He may not be as smart or funny or sensitive or handsome. <laughs> but I know he really likes you. So tell him to give you a call. Thanks, Matt. You know, someday you're going to make some girl very, very happy. Yeah. I wish for you. Hey, Joe. Uh, Debbie was asking about you. You should give her a call, man. She really likes you. Wait, you want me to call her? <laughs> She's a little old for me, don't you think? I don't know, Matt. Every now and then you act pretty grown up. Give me a quack. Quack. Hey, Lloyd, do you know anything about a $300 fender job at no charge for a guy named Hiram Franklin? Trust me, Mom. We got off cheap. record straight, the Liberty Bell was made in 1752 in London and hung in Independence Hall in Philadelphia. It was rung on July 8, 1776 to celebrate the adoption of the Declaration of Independence and it cracked in July of 1835 while ringing for the funeral of Chief Justice Marshall. But you can learn more about the Liberty Bell and other national monuments by visiting your local library. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <sighs>